Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to episode number 200 of our C++ series here. And in today's episode, I wanted to just kind of orient where we are as far as learning the C++ programming language from this playlist and also express some thanks for those of you who have been supporting this series. Uh, it really means a lot and it's been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot from you. You folks have taught me a lot about C++ and we're going to continue doing more videos here, so don't worry about that. But uh, I thought it would be fun to just kind of look back on this playlist here and see the 200 or so videos. We're at 199 here. This video that you're watching is the 200th episode here in this playlist and just kind of pick out a few that I think are going to be interesting and just reflect back on where we started. So anyways, here's the very first video, which I believe is the most popular in the series, which is kind of funny here. Uh, but let's hear what I had to say at the very start here. And then I could talk a little bit about where this series is going as well. So let me let this play here. Hi there, folks. It's Mike here, and welcome to this new series on C++ program. I'm really excited to be bringing... And this series here started in December 21st or 23rd, I believe, sometime around that, uh, at least when it was recorded and uploaded of 2021. So this is going to be a three-year-old video here <laughs> already, which again, the time flies here. I'm going to speed this up just a little bit here. And that is true. That is still true. You know, I see C++ as a general purpose language. It can be used for anything. So nothing's changed there. The language has continued evolving. You'll notice at the very start of this series, I'm using C++ maybe 17 in some videos, and then I moved to C++ 20, and now I'm consistently using 23. So it's evolving every three years, uh, and again, still being used in a lot of these domains here you to access the hardware and just really program the language so that it's not getting in your way or there's unnecessary layers of abstraction on top of it. So C++ is a multi-paradigm language. You can program in it procedurally, object-oriented, functional style, and it lets you attack problems in different ways. So you can think about... And I think that's still definitely true, right? C++ is a language that has multiple paradigms, so you try to choose the right constructs to solve the right problem. And that's part of the origin of this series, actually, because it is such a large language with a large standard library that picking and choosing the parts or finding support for how to learn something, that's where this series was born from. Uh, both both from the perspective of you know teaching and providing support to other folks or students uh, working in the industry and for myself as it forced me to do a deeper dive into different constructs of the language so i think that was really uh useful uh, with such a large language to to do this sort of deep dive over these many years now about the best way to solve a programming problem so it allows you to be creative and it doesn't tend to get in your way that said c plus plus can be Although sometimes C++ can get in your way, uh, but that's why we try to develop good abstractions and, you know, learn different design patterns and these types of things here. So again, just a few, <laughs> you know, that that's true. Every language has their sort of, uh, you know, issues that you have to run into, but, but you have to know about those different trade-offs and learning more about a different programming language, whatever language you use, whether it is C++ or D or C or any of the other like 30 or so languages that I've looked at <laughs> on this channel. Um, you know, you just have to sort of know how to navigate uh, what the language, you know, provides and, and what some of the uh, trade-offs are. A really big language. So that's why I want to do this video series on it, starting from the beginning, talking about things like variables, primitive types, functions, loops, and so on. It's expected that you'll at least know a little bit of programming, but you can always supplement that with some Googling or reading some books as well. But then what I'm really excited about is we're going to get into topics that I don't normally get to spend a lot of time. So we will cover stuff like classes, inheritance, other object-oriented uh, features and concepts. This was an important part of the series, actually, to cover classes in detail. Um, I think there's still more that could be covered, but at some point there is about 25 lessons or so on classes showing just some of the different things here. And again, that was born out of just wanting to um, do something a little bit more in-depth. Um, again, I don't think the videos are any harder to consume. Uh, again, you folks could be the judge of that, but um, too often I was finding tutorials or even book chapters that would kind of give a surface level implementation of uh, what a class is or show you an implementation, but not talk about all the different um, things that you run into in the wild. Um, and this is part of dealing with a really large uh, language that's lived for a long time, that the evolution and even the style of how people write things or use features like classes has changed over time. Um, so that was kind of uh, interesting and fun for me to do here. Uh, and again, I've learned a lot from other folks um, about different details of the language. So again, uh, that was really fun to share with you um, during that portion of this uh, video series things like pointers, references, and so on, but then I can dive a little bit more into the advanced stuff, like the rule of three or the rule of five, or what move semantics are, and how that explains all these different things. If you haven't heard of those things, no worries, but we will be able to talk about advanced things like memory allocators, different... Yeah, and what I want to say about some of these uh, advanced things is they're actually not all that hard once you see them. Uh, I guess the trick is always to know when to apply these techniques, but again, 
providing some uh, lessons on how to uh, use some of these features was very useful. And the comment sections um, have actually been very useful. We've had a lot of engaging uh, discussions here. So I'd encourage you on these videos to try to check out uh, the comments and a lot of folks have really contributed nice feedback um, if there was more to feature or something in the video. So again, uh, I found that really, really, really uh, a nice part of this video series and I hope you uh, get something out of that as well. Types of smart pointers and when and where you should use them. Maybe some design patterns and how to apply them as needed. So I think this will be really great. And, and this is um, something worth pointing out here that I do have other series on if I scroll down here uh, design patterns I'm working on some new videos that are going to be upcoming in the concurrency series so you can look forward to that just as sort of a little news update uh, if you will uh, but hopefully those are also useful so I mean in total I guess we've got more than 200 episodes <laughs> but I did split things into different uh, playlists here but again this is the main playlist and then you've got these two uh, playlists as well and then um, if you go to courses at mshot.io I've got some courses here um, and this this course is particularly useful if you're just starting from scratch and just need to ramp up uh, as quick as possible and then some debugging stuff and then of course the playlist here that's my little um you know pitch for folks if you want to track your progress uh, sometimes youtube keeps track of my progress on video sometimes it doesn't so uh, if you want a place where you can do that um, that is also useful so anyways uh let's see what else we got here yep c++ still seems to be the default for the game industry although i am seeing more uh, of course, like C Sharp is an obvious candidate, other different languages that are being used. So uh, that's that's great to see. But, you know, if you're going to learn C++ or be working on a C++ code base, uh, in particular, I'm thinking of things like Unreal Engine, for instance, um, you'll still have to learn some C++. So hopefully you'll get something out of this series. ...on just setting up C++ for your operating system. Again, the great thing about C++ is it's available on Windows, Linux, Mac, and, well, many other systems. If you're going to go into console game development or embedded systems, C++ is still your tool that you can use. So Yep, C++ is everywhere. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, that that's still the story here. That's still true as of the last three years. Anyway, I just wanted to share my excitement and let you know you're going to be learning if you follow along in this series. Make sure to like and subscribe so that you can see all the videos in this series. And with that said, I'm going to keep it short and simple here, and let's go ahead and dive in. I'm excited. All right, yeah, make sure to, uh, you know, dive in and watch some of these videos here. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's fun to uh, look back on some of these videos here. Just some favorites, if I can uh, point you towards. Of course, if you're just getting set up uh, with C++, you'll want to start off with the front of the series. Um, the book uh, recommendations, let's see if I can find that here. I might have to scroll through one time and get these loaded up here. Um, up here we are. C++ book recommendations. That's been a popular one. Uh, that folks have enjoyed. Uh, another one that I would point folks to if you just are starting this playlist or maybe you have some C++, um, this one I actually really like doing. It's not one of the most popular ones, but uh, you know what I call feeding your YouTube algorithm with, you know, by watching C++ conferences. I mean, this is kind of true of anything, right? Pick whatever language you want, but since we're here in C++, um, it's, it's kind of neat after you watch a few C++ talks and then you keep getting good information coming to you. So if folks are asking, you know, how do I learn now? It's, you know, finding good books, watching good conference talks, um, and actually just reading, you know, some open source code is actually very useful. Uh, maybe that's something we'll do more in, in future series or something. So those were some favorites here. Uh, another one that I really liked here, let's see if I have uh, the Jeopardy edition. Folks have liked this video <laughs> where we did a little game on classes. Uh, again, that was part of that 25 part series on classes, which I enjoyed uh, doing. Uh, I think there's even some more, I mean, delegating constructors and all these things. I mean, so I don't know how many episodes I've got on classes. Let's see, 30, 31, we might have even visited. Okay, 32 <laughs> at least and counting. So occasionally I do um, add more to. Uh, we did some template stuff here. So um, templates are, again, can be a superpower um, when you sort of understand or maybe get past some of the barrier of the syntax because the syntax is a little bit weird and has gone through some evolution in the language. Um, the other videos, let me go ahead and scroll through here. Ah, um, I really like uh, this uh, pointer to implementation pattern. So that's one that, um, and, and using struct as options, these are ones that are kind of nice if you're working on like a long live code base, or sometimes if you're reading other people's code and you're like, why did they do this? Um, but it is, I mean, these are two of the things that I like doing to support a long lived code base with a stable application binary interface or ABI, we would say. Um, so that was a video I really enjoyed doing. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, that I think would be interesting. The ones I want to get to, function inlining, you know, folks like to talk about optimization and stuff. So that's kind of a useful one to know about here. 
Uh, span is one of these important like modern features, especially when you're using it with things like arrays or vectors. So span is one that I definitely recommend uh, checking out here. Uh, on comments and code documentation, uh, again, that wasn't strictly about C++, but uh, super useful. Um, and another part of this series I really enjoyed doing was going through all the data structures. So you're going to see we kind of jumped into the STL for a while here. Um, so if you need any of the videos on that, I haven't covered flat map at this point in time, but that'll probably be in this next chunk of like uh, two, episode 201 to 300, <laughs> hopefully. Um, and but, but then I also enjoy doing all the algorithms here. Because that's what really makes all of your C++ kind of um, fun <laughs> in some ways when you get to actually kind of look at the language and work with it as sort of building blocks instead of having to write everything from scratch. It's like, oh, here's all these things here. Um, and again, knowing how to use the STL can be very useful. Um, and it kind of motivates why things were set up with um, iterators and now why we've moved into ranges. Again, I'll cover ranges in this next chunk of, you know, let's say episode 201 to 300 over time here. Um, so those have been really fun. Um, and then... What's been kind of fun recently, for those who've been keeping up with the series, if I go to the bottom here, uh, we've talked about stream-based I.O. here. Let's go to the first video, right? See out. So kind of revisiting this global object, this thing <laughs> that you know we're exposed to at the very start of our C++ uh, journey. But at least me as a beginner, I didn't really understand. Um, so in a way, if you're a beginner, you could even start with uh, you know, watching the first few episodes and then maybe taking a look at C out after you get curious and there's a whole bunch of stuff on uh, stream-based IO here. But that was also really fun to do kind of a deep dive in and make sure I, I understood, you know, how some of these things are working. Uh, really kind of cleared up some of these, you know, corner cases of like, what is a string stream and, and these sorts of things, which we've just covered here. So uh, anyways, folks, it's been a lot of fun here uh, filming all these videos and sharing them with you. So I just want to, again, thank you for your support. Uh, there will be more C++ videos coming, but I wanted to kind of knock out episode 200 and I thought it'd be fun to just kind of do a review of different things that we've seen here um, <laughs> and see how far we've come in what's almost been uh, three full years since starting this series. So, you know, some things have changed. The cameras improved, the sound quality and these types of things um, but um, the overall mission as far as just teaching you programming things and doing it in C++ on this series has been a lot of fun and will continue here so just keep an eye on this playlist look out for new videos they'll be rolling in um, as they usually do and I'll look forward to hearing about your comments uh, questions or other uh, you know, C++ or programming things that I don't know about here. It's been a lot of fun so far. So anyways, folks, thanks for your time and attention on this video, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.